I'm shooting coach Mike Dunn, and welcome to How to Shoot a Basketball. Today, we are going to talk about gripping the basketball. Where does it really matter, and how do we do it? It's a popular conversation amongst many, not just on social media, but in gyms. I still remember being at camps, uh, told to have space between my hand and the basketball, uh, how that ball needed to come off my hand, which finger it needed to come off last. So today we're going to put it to rest. I'll give you kind of my spiel on how we grip the basketball and again, where that's actually most important and where that's going to pay off most for us. So to get started, first, we'll just talk about the shooting hand, right? When we go to grip the basketball, and I'm going to take away the ball to begin with here, if I was to hold my hand out towards you, when I grip that basketball, I want to think about each finger pointing up to the sky initially, right? That doesn't necessarily mean that that's how it's going to be when we're ready to shoot the basketball, but I want you to take note of the direction of each finger. Each finger is pointing up. If this thumb, the thumb tends to be the, the tricky part, we'll talk about the pinky here in a second, but if this thumb gets too far in front or way too far down, we end up stretching our hand out and putting way more pressure on our hand than we need to. We don't want our hand relaxed, but we also don't want it to, to not to, to, to have no feel of the basketball either, right? So when we shoot, if we get a nice spread, not overspreading, but a nice spread and having our fingers all pointed the same, in the same general direction, in this case, right now, what I say is up, we're going to be good to go. And just like we don't want that thumb to in front, we don't want that pinky to reach out to the side either, okay? So if I were to just turn to the side here this way from the back view, this is a really, really nice grip. You see all my fingers are kind of pointing in that general vicinity of up, and that's really what we're after to begin with, okay? Now, when it comes to actually how our hand touches the basketball, I like to say the more coverage of our hand, the better, right? So there's a big debate. Do we have a gap? Do we not have a gap? Palm shooter, he's a palm shooter, she's a palm shooter, but he's not. So what, what do we do here? The truth is it's somewhere in between, and we're all going to be a little bit different, right? There's a lot of images out there of Damian, or Dame Lillard with his hands or his fingers coming off the ball. Understand that sometimes the exception makes the rule in a sense, right? Just because Dame does it doesn't mean that everybody else is going to do it. And what we're trying to do here is to have a really nice foundational understanding of what it is we're trying to do, okay? So when I say the more coverage, the better, what I mean by that is I'm going to try to cover this basketball as much as I can and get a feel for it with my hand as much as I can, right? You'll see that right now, I feel like I can place my whole hand on the basketball, but when I'm going to go up to this position that a lot of people call a set point, there's going to be a tiny little gap here, generally, right? It's not a huge gap, right? But there's still a tiny little bit of space just because that's how our hand's constructed anyway, right? But I'm not pushing the ball down to make, to, to make there be no space. I have that ball in my hand, Remember, my fingers are spread, not overly spread. And what I really have here is control of the ball with my finger pads, right? I'm able to kind of hold this ball as I move it around. My finger pads being this part of my fingers, not just my fingertips, right? And then not obviously just my palm. My finger pads have control. I have that ball pretty far down in my hand to the point where I have really, really nice control of the basketball, right? I have this theory that, you know, I went to plenty of camps as a kid and they would give us their, their 30 minute teaching of shooting and, uh, and the, the, the person teaching needed some way to demonstrate, you know, what we should do versus what we can't, what we, what we shouldn't do, right? And so the first thing they would say is, will we ever shoot a ball like this? And everybody would say no, right? And then somebody would say, will we ever shoot a ball like this? And then everybody would say no. And then thus, in my opinion, I, this whole conversation of the gap was born because it's just somewhere in between, right? But we're not having to shoot for the gap. We just need as much coverage as possible when we get that ball to that point where our hand is underneath the ball. If there's a little bit of space there, more than okay. If your hand's a little bit different and it almost looks like there's no space there, but you still have really nice control of the basketball, it's not sliding all over the place, we're all right there as well, okay? Now, the last part, and the part that really, really is going to be important, is where grip really matters in the shot, right? If I started my ball here, and now let's just do a, a classic test of finding the air hole, right? A lot of people say, well, if you're an index finger or an index shooter, you would place your index finger on the air hole. Or if you're a split finger, you would split that air hole. Middle finger, middle finger on the air hole, right? The big thing here is, ultimately, we're going to want to have to push the middle of our hand through the middle 
of the basketball, right? If I were to say, okay, split grip, and then I split that air hole, but then I move the ball up to a point where I'm here, if I was to remove my hand, I'm in no position to actually push through the middle of the basketball. What I just did here for my grip of the ball really doesn't mean anything, right? So where grip really matters is where we're at in what we call our two position in the position that we push through the ball towards the basket. That is what a lot of people call the set point, but here we call it the two position. So whether you are an index finger, an index shooter, a split grip or a middle finger shooter, the big thing here is that once we get to this position that we're able to push through the middle of the basketball. If we can push through the middle of the ball with the middle of our hand, we're on our path to shooting a straighter shot, okay? Now, what finger does the ball leave last? Well, it's either gonna be the index or it's going to be, be the middle, right? Whether it's, if it's the ring, the pinky, or the thumb, we're going to have problems. But if more often than not, you can shoot it and have that, fit, that ball leave either the index or the middle finger last, and you're pushing through the middle of the basketball or approximately the middle of the basketball, you're going to be in good shape, okay? So to start, finger spread, same direction, get a nice full coverage of the basketball. If there's a little space, that's okay. And then let's make sure that when we're in our set, pos or our set point or our two position, we're in position to push the middle of our hand, either the index or the middle finger, through the middle of the basketball. Keep shooting.